Let's grab some markers and do some math. Welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you. We're going to do two integrals today, two that are really important if you're taking your first year calculus seriously, as well as if you're taking the IB program. So this is the first one. Okay, this first one may appear on surface just to be a regular U substitution where you would take the expression under the radical and set it equal to U. The problem is the variable on the outside of the radical is downstairs in the denominator. A direct U substitution would be perfect if you had the X in the numerator, but it's down in the denominator. So there's a couple of other things we can use. What we could do is if under the radical we have, say, x squared minus some number. I'm going to call it a squared. Or, just since we're talking about it, suppose the number comes first minus x squared. Then you can actually take advantage of trig substitution. So for instance here, if x is replaced with a secant, now secant squared minus 1 can be reduced to tan squared. And the square root of tan squared is tan. So that would release the radical. Since we're talking about it here, sometimes the variable is in second spot. So there, a really good cho choice would be sine. Because 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So in this case, what we would do is let x equal, well, whatever a is, I repeat it, and I use secant theta. And in this case here, whatever x is, I take a and multiply it by sine, so sine theta. Okay, so we're gonna use the upper one because we're dealing with the variable in first spot. So what I'm gonna do is let my x equal, my a value is three, the square root of nine is three, secant theta. Notice I'm converting from, from just the number x, the variable x, to now a new variable theta. And I just proceed, once I have my substitution, it's like any substitution, I take the derivative of both sides. So dx in terms of d theta is equal to three. The derivative of secant is known to be secant times tan. And then what I'm gonna do is separate the dx and the d theta. So I isolate the dx equals three, secant theta, tan theta, a d theta. So what I can do now is where I see the dx, I can simply replace it with this, and where I see the x, that's where this can go. All right, so let me rewrite my integral here in terms of theta. So the integral of the square root of x, so x is substituted for 3 secant theta squared minus 9 all over x, which again is 3 secant theta, and dx is 3 secant theta tan theta d theta. Well, look here. We can do some cancellation. The 3's cancel nicely. The secants cancel. And not only that, but look under the radical. Well, 3 squared is 9, and 9 becomes a common factor, which you can then pull out and square root. And the square root of 9 is 3. So that becomes 3 integral. I'm left with a secant squared minus 1, which is tan squared. I'm using my imagination here. And the square root of tan squared is tan, tan theta. The only thing left here is another tan, but tan times tan is tan squared, d theta. So that's really reduced down nicely. I got rid of the radical. Okay, now tan squared isn't really a well-known antiderivative. However, what I could do is use that same substitution again. I know that tan squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. Don't forget your d theta. That has to go along for the ride. And I can integrate secant squared. So that's going to be equivalent to 3. I'm going to replace my integral sign with regular brackets. That's going to be tan theta. The integral of secant squared is tan theta. The integral of negative 1 is negative theta in terms of this variable. Close the bracket. This is where I introduce my constant of integration. Now, I can't keep the answer like that because the original question was in terms of x. So that's an easy fix. So now I want to go back to the x from the theta. So do you notice that that implies that secant theta is the same as x over 3? Well, I'll even make it easier. I'll turn that to cosine. So that implies that cosine 
theta is equal to 3 over x. Well, how is that useful? How is that going to allow me to take theta back to x? Well, what I could do is construct a simple grade 10, grade 9, depending on where you're from, triangle, a little 90 degree triangle, and let that be theta. So cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, okay, if 3 is the adjacent, that means this is 3, and this is the hypotenuse x. And there's someone who lived about 2,300 years ago who told us that we could find this missing side by square rooting the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the, of the given leg. All right, well, that's useful because look, now what I can do is figure out what tan theta is in terms of this triangle. Well, it's the opposite over the adjacent. So I can finish this off. So I can say 3. I'm just going to bring the 3 through here. 3 times tan theta, which is going to be equal to the square root of x squared minus 9, all divided by 3. And notice those 3's nicely cancel. Minus 3 times theta, 3 times theta. Well, what's theta? Well, we know that the cosine of theta is equal to 3 over x. It's like we're trying to solve for an angle. So that means that theta itself will be the arc cos of 3 over x. The arc cos of 3 over x. So I'm going to write that here, the arc cos of 3 over x. And don't forget your constant. So there it is. Uh, whenever we have a radical and we can't do a regular u substitution, think of a trigonometric substitution. All right, let's take a look at the second one. So the integral of arc sine x dx. All right, so this one sometimes, it's not that difficult to do. Actually, we use by parts. So by parts. But sometimes it's not obvious to students, OK? Because there, there aren't a bunch of things in the integrand. So sometimes we miss it. However, uh, if I do parts, I'm going to set up a u expression and a dv expression, OK? I'm assuming you know by parts here. So what I'm going to do is choose part of the integrand to put here and the other part to go there. I sort of break it into parts. Now, I'm not going to put arc sine here because that's my problem. So I'm going to, the only place where arc sine can go is here. So arc sine of x. And then dv, this is where students often get confused. They don't know what to put there. So they, they think, oh my gosh, do I just put a dx there? And the answer is yes. So now I'm ready to go. So I can sort of do my derivative on this side and my antiderivative on that side. So du by dx. Well, arc sine is known. The derivative of arc sine, we know what that is. It's 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so what I could do is say du is equal to dx over this. Okay. On the other side, I'm going to take the integral, so integrate both sides. So that's going to give me v equals x. And now I'm off to the races. If I'm going to use parts, remember parts simply take v times u, so x times arc sine, x times arc sine x, minus the integral of v du, which is going to be x times this or x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. OK, this isn't too bad because now look, we could use a u substitution here. 1 minus x squared, we could let that be u. So 1 minus x squared for u. If I differentiate both sides, so du equals negative 2x dx, just leaving the dx on the other side. And look at the x dx cancels really well, or substitutes really well. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative a half. And then I can do my substitution. So, so far what I've got, I'll just continue here. The original integral is going to be equal to x arc sine x. Now, I'm going to take the negative a half and bring it out front. Do you see? So a negative and a negative is a positive 1 half. Anti-differentiate. Well, I've got a du in the top. The du is going to replace the x dx all over the square root of u. OK? Well, don't forget, the square root of u is u to the half. So it's like u to the negative a half upstairs. So let's go for it here. So that's equal to x 
arc sine x. And the antiderivative of u to the negative a half is just you add 1 and then divide by the answer. So that's going to give me plus 1 half. That's going to give me a u to the half divided by a half. And I'm going to introduce my constant of integration now because I don't have any more integral symbols. These halves are going to cancel. And that's just going to leave u to the half, or the square root of u. And u is 1 minus x squared. So the final answer, drum roll please, is x arc sine x plus the square root, that's what a half means, of u, which is 1 minus x squared plus c. And there's the final answer. And it used by parts, integration by parts, and a little quick u substitution. And we get this answer. All right, those are the integrals for today. Leave a comment down below, slap a like on this video, and I'll see you back here in the next video.